So, today I want to talk about the lowest averagely rated books on Goodreads that I have read. We're going to go with like 20 or just until I stop. Uh, so we'll see at the end. My name is Rachel. I'm from Moonlight Library and from, I mean, that is also me. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't because I do talk about books. Yes, if you like that, then you should be here. My kitten is going crazy for my tripod. Maybe I should have uh, pulled it up before I started filming. I was like, cat hair. Ah, my phone. My phone. Okay, so we're going to start with the lowest rated book and that is Post York and that's by James Romberger. This book, <laughs> this was a graphic novel. Mind you, a lot of these will have mild stories along with them as to <laughs> why I read them. <laughs> so this one, I work at a library. I used to work in circulation and at night it would be a little slow and sometimes I would uh, pick up a little graphic novel from the new section which was next to my dad, like the checkout desk. So I picked this one up and I just read it. Like I didn't know anything about it. It was not good. It was like post-apocalyptic New York, post York, you get it. I feel like the it was very short. That's why I picked it up. And then after this, I realized, Rachel, maybe we shouldn't just be picking up random things just because they're short. Maybe I didn't learn that because I feel like I've done that again, but oh my God, it was not good. I gave it two stars because I wasn't like this offended me, but I was like, wow, this was just not a good book. Like, I don't know why it was created, basically. I'm so sorry if this is your book. It has an average 2.57 rating. My cat has gone crazy. She really wants to touch everything because we can't help it. The second one comes down to Rachel again, working at the circulation desk, decided to pick up a book. This is like an actual novel. I was like, let's see how this one goes. It has an intriguing cover and an intriguing name. This is Coming of Age at the End of Days. This was in our fiction adult section. It's Alice LaPlante. This one has a score of 2.87 averagely, and it was not good. It like, that is such a bad score on Goodreads. I am so sorry to this author, but that is just really poor. This one is about this teenager who there's a cult involved and there's a teenager that becomes friends with her neighbor who's an adult and he's living at his parents house it's kind of weird he starts dating her teacher or something they're joining a cult i think there was milk involved in the cult something to do with cows this is what i remember i gave it one star it was deplorable it was a very bad book i would not recommend picking something up just because if you've never heard of the book maybe you should look into it maybe read a synopsis i don't know I don't know, just throwing it out there. The next one, number three, as we're going higher, this, I don't, I don't know, don't, no one knows what I do and why I do it. So this is Adrian and the Tree of Secrets. It has an average 2.87 rating. It's written by Hubert. This one, it looks really pretty. That's the thing, like it looks really pretty and it is, LGBTQ, it's teenagers, and it's coming of age and figuring out your sexuality. But I remember there, I think that was the premise. I remember there being something that just didn't sit well with me about this book. I don't remember what it was, but there was something about it that I was like, I just don't know if you're coming at this. There was something. I gave it one star. I feel like I was offended by it in some way. The next one is The Seven Rays. This one I did not rate. Average rating is three stars. This is by Jessica Bendinger. This was back in the day, well before I was on Goodreads, I think. It must have been like 2006 or so. I was in high school and Simon Schuster had a sub publishing house called Pulse It. Pulse It? Simon Pulse? It was for teenagers. It was like young adult Simon Schuster. I started reading this book because 
if you applied to read their books and give them fill out a questionnaire afterwards you could read these books for free so there were a lot of books that i was reading back then that i would just write a little review as a teenager and this was one of them i remember there being like magic powers involved i feel like I remember liking it, but I guess other people didn't. And it's maybe one of those things that like, I, it didn't stand the test of time, obviously. But do I remember much about it? No. The next one is Orange Lemon Egg Canary, and that's by Ryan Groff. This was a play. It has an average rating of three stars. I gave it two. When I was in college, I was having a hard time speaking in front of people, public speaking, and I didn't have to take a public speaking course. So my advisor said, maybe you should do like an acting 101 and as a different way to do public speaking that might engage you more. And I was like, actually, that's a great idea. So I did this. This one, I think, I think I did a monologue from Orange Lemon Egg Canary. And so this one was just me. Or maybe this was like I had to do a scene with someone else. I, I think this was the one. I had to do a scene with someone else. And it was this guy. We were a couple and we were fighting, getting into it. We would rehearse together. And then the day that we had to actually perform it in front of the class, the teacher had told him to, what am I doing? Sorry, I like put my hand up to fix something. So the teacher had told him to kiss me, to like shock me. And I was like, whoa, my God, this man just kissed me. What? <laughs> Anyways, that was wild. The next one is House of Cotton. This one I read more recently, Monica Brashears, and it has an average rating of 3.07. This girl goes to work at a funeral home as some sort of I don't know, escort. I, I don't remember. It, it went in my head and went out my head. I got sent it as an ARC. I don't know how because like I've never applied for an ARC. I got it in the mail. It came with a tube of lipstick and I was like, where did this even come from and how did anyone get my address? It was a little creepy, honestly. Someone did and the this publishing house and I was a little creeped out. Anyways, I read it and I was like, mm, I don't like this book. I never reviewed it because obviously I didn't have to. They sent it to me without me even asking for it. Yeah, and I, I didn't like it. I gave it two stars. It was a horror book. I don't really care about it. It was like a weird sexual thing happening. I, I don't, I don't know what was happening. The next one is Paul Bearers Club. It's Paul Tremblay. It has an average rating of 3.11. And this is <laughs> back to funerals. So this is a boy in high school. That's where it starts, at least. He becomes a pallbearer and he starts a pallbearer club with other people. And there's this one girl that's like kind of like weird. And he's looking back on it and being like, what was happening? It's a horror. It's an unreliable narrator. I liked it, but I guess a lot of people did not like it. They were not big on this one, but I had a good time. Like, I liked the kind of environment of it. I think it was set in like the 80s, like late 80s, early 90s or something. I don't know. It was interesting. And then we have Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas, average rating 3.12. Catherine House was... <laughs> It was okay. I would just say it's okay. It's dark academia, but with more of like a speculative lens. So it has some weird stuff going in. Very exclusive college, after college thing. And they're studying something called plasma, kind of body horror, weird. Do we actually know what's going on? I thought it was okay, but it's not something that I look back on and I'm like, whoa, it was so good. Because everyone's like, oh, it's like bunnies blah, or bunny, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't know. I I wouldn't personally, I was like looking up to look at bunny because I was like, is it bunny or bunnies? Like my brain was confused. I love that book. I don't, I wouldn't compare Catherine. Like I can see the comparison, but it's not my comparison. The next one is I Am Not Okay With This by Charles Forsman. It has an average rating of 3.13. And <laughs> dear Lord, why did I give it a three? Why did I give it a three? Anyways, I don't really like Charles Forsman, honestly. I read End of the Fucking World. I read that one as well. They're both graphic novels. Anyways, this one's a graphic novel. Both were adapted into Netflix shows, which were great shows, but I don't like the bleakness of them. They're depressing. They're just kind of like, 
ugh, you know, the world is a horrible place. Everything sucks. I'm not big on that. I like sad stuff. I don't love depressing things. I actually made a video about sad versus depressing. If you want to go back and watch that one, you can really get inside the mind of Rachel. Next one is Trust Exercise by Susan Cho, and that has an average 3.14. This one was so weird. This was such a weird book. I think it was, it either won or it was nominated for the National Book Award the year that it was up. This is like a high school drama club, but it has like three acts. You really, you get whiplash almost with it. It is an interesting premise, but at the same time, I just don't think it really fulfilled what I wanted it to or what I think it should have. Interesting. It was very, very interesting, but I also just didn't really love it. So I gave it a two star because it was interesting, but it didn't fulfill what I thought I wanted. Sure. On we go. Okay. So I just proved myself wrong here. So daydreams for night, and that is an average 3.14 by John Southworth. This is a graphic novel slash fable -y things, fa fable -y things, tales that has pictures, but it's also narrative. So it's like these short stories that are supposed to be like spooky and haunting or something like that. I did. I did. I did. It's like you want to be Neil Gaiman, but you're not Neil Gaiman. That's the end of the day. You're not Neil Gaiman. That's what it is. And it's okay not to be Neil Gaiman, but that's it. Or like you also want to be um, Tim Burton. The, I was like the other guy that's Neil Gaiman, but in movie form. <laughs> I, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam, average rating 3.17. They just made a Netflix movie out of this apocalyptic sort of story. And it very much so has to do with race and equality and social status and media obsession with connectivity. So these people go to an Airbnb, this white family, they're having a hard time getting on their apps and stuff. I don't know, the internet's weird. This couple shows up, a black couple, and they say, this is our house everything full blackout New York City. And we wanted to come out here. We're going to stay in the basement. You're all good. And it's, it's weird. It's weird. It's very like postmodern in the sense of do you always get the answers? So therefore, does a book need to give you the answers? I don't know. Then we have 100 Girls by Adam Gallardo, and that's an average rating of 3.19. This was a graphic novel of these like 100 clones, and that's really all I have to say about that. I think it was one of the first graphic novels I ever read. I read it so long ago. I must have been in middle school or something like that. So that's the end of that. The Secret Art of Great Conversation by Igor Ledochowski, Chowski, average rating 3.21. This one was in a time in my life where I was like, I need to learn how to talk to people. I was probably like 18. I was like, I need to learn how to converse. I started like overthinking the idea of talking to other people and like how people have a conversation, what you talk about and how you create connection with others. And so I was reading a lot of these like conversation books and I don't remember this one specifically. I remember this part of my life. I gave it three stars. I must have liked it I, enough. I must have been mediocre about it. Then we have Uninvited by Justine Musk, average rating 3.23. Do I remember this book? I remember there was like a trickster coyote. That's something I remember. It was like a ghosty story. It wasn't good. I remember talking a lot of trash about this book as I was reading it, and I was having such a hard time getting through it. But do I know what it's about? No, of course not. Why Why would I? It's some young adult book that I probably picked up at a used bookstore and was like, this is what I'm reading now, you know, because it was also back in the day of like, Young adult books were like Hunger Games or something. It was 2014. Like you didn't really have tons of options back then. And you didn't really know what you were getting into or what other people thought. It, it was difficult. It was it was a harder it was a harder life back then. It was. 
And then we have by night, and that's John Allison, average rating 3.23. This is a graphic novel. I, As I said, I would just pick up tons of graphic novels at the library and just read them because I was just doing my thing. This is volume one. This is like a reporter sort of person that goes into like fantasy Ask They're like monsters in the woods and she's reporting on it. I, I don't know. I didn't pick up the next ones because I was like, I don't really care. And that's the end of it. I gave it three stars, but it was like, I'm not going any further. And then we have Penny Dora in the Wishing Box, Volume 1. Can't believe there are other volumes of this. Average rating 3.26 by Michael Stock. <laughs> this was not good. It was a girl who gets like a wishing box. That's really all I'm going to tell you because I don't even care. Like I, I don't even know. I gave it a, two stars. I don't know why I read it. Like I really think I've learned my lesson about just picking up books because they're there, you know. Here's a graphic novel. Just read it. That, that's what happens when you read graphic novels and you work at a library that has tons of graphic novels. You'll just pick them up and then you're like, why did I do that? Like, <laughs> why did I read that book? I could have lived without it for the rest of my life. Then we have Swamplandia by Karen Russell. It has an average 3.27. I can understand why people don't like this book. I get it. It's kind of like Wiki Watchy. The Mermaid Show is outside of Tampa and Coral Gable, I think. They have like the straws that go up and like they pretend they're like underwater like mermaids. It's a whole show you can go to. That That's what this family is kind of doing is this mermaid thing. And they're also doing alligators gator shows or something. Primarily follows this little girl, but it also follows the brother who works at a weird water park thing. It's so strange. It is weirder than you think it would be. I really liked it. There is a part at the end that is so trigger warning that I will say right now, you really need to look it up before you go into it because that was just Ugh. I gave that a four star. I thought it was beautifully done. So then we have The Body Artist by Don DeLillo, average rating 3.28. And this is another example of Rachel just read a book because it was short. Do I remember it? No, of course not. I liked White Noise. That's partially why I read it. I don't even remember what this book's about. I gave it an average rating, or I gave it a rating of two. An average rating of two? That doesn't make sense. How many times did I read this, you know? Uh, hey, I didn't like this book. Let's read it multiple times to see why I didn't like it. Then we have A Gist, a Gist for a Gist, <laughs> A Gift for a Ghost by Borja Gonzalez, an average rating of 3.28. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful book, a beautiful graphic novel. It goes back to the thing where I just, was just reading anything that I could read. And if it looks pretty, I'm going to put it in my eyeballs. But uh, we're, mm, you know, I gave it a three star. Not That Kind of Girl by Lena Dunham, average rating 3.29. Yeah, my thoughts on Lena Dunham. Anyways, uh, I loved girls. I loved girls. I I had a really hard time with this one. Gave it one star. Didn't like it. Didn't not did like it. Sorry if you did because I did not. And then we have Forbidden Brides of the Faceless Slaves in the Secret House of the Oh my god, that's such a long title. I don't even want to open it. Anyways, by Neil Gaiman love him, but he comes out with a lot of stuff. So we got our hits and our misses. Average rating 3.29. I get it. I gave it a three. It was, it was okay. It was fine, but it's not something I'm going to sit with for the rest of my life. And that is the motto of this the motto of this whole thing. And then we have You've Lost a Lot of Blood by Eric LaRocca, average rating 3.29. Disgusting. I understand why people wouldn't like this, but <laughs> it was one of my favorite books I read last year. So excuse me, but not excuse me. You know, like get it right. This one... <laughs> beautiful. It's horror, which, you know, sometimes when it's like weird, graphic, strange, alt horror, people, it does not get good ratings. That's just how it goes. It's polarizing. It's an interesting like collection of things. That's what You've Lost a Lot of Blood is. It's a collection and it is one full story. It's like things all put together to create this story and 
beautiful. You know what? That's probably like 45 books that I just said. I don't know. You count them and let me know. I'll probably count them after I'm editing, when I am editing this. That's just how life goes and who I am. And you know, for the rest of my life, that's who I am. Why did I just say it like that? I don't know. Um, anyways, what's the lowest rated, averagely rated book that you've read on Goodreads? Let me know because I would really like to know. Put it in the comments because that's interesting. And just because it's averagely rated low does not mean that you're not going to like it because obviously there are a couple of those that I really liked, you know? So it does say at the end of the day that sometimes a book is well liked by some people and hated by others and then it creates a poor score whereas some books just aren't that good like that's just how it is so don't judge a book by its score all the time read the reviews end of the day read the reviews listen to some people talking about it hear some people out and that's where you should decide whether or not you want to read a book and that is the end of the story. That's the end of my entire story of these things. Bye-bye.